Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the JJ Pro Hax X3. This is a JJRC model and it is a beginner photography drone. It's equipped with a GPS as well as a modular 1080p camera that also has a built-in Wi-Fi transmitter. That's right, a Wi-Fi transmitter so you can use your smartphone or tablet. I think most people already have something like that at home. So you don't really need any extra equipment like a, like a screen or goggles. You can use the Wi-Fi right through your phone. Just keep in mind, Wi-Fi FPV, especially in these lower end models, are pretty limiting. Just don't be expecting DJI type ranges. And as long as you're flying in an open area, you should be perfectly fine. What I mean by that is there is a delay between what your quad is actually doing and what you're seeing on your phone. And one other thing I wanted to mention is there are lots of spare parts that are available for the X3. In fact, with all the parts that are offered, you can build your own X3. Not that it's actually practical to do, as the cost of the individual parts would be more than the cost of the assembled X3. I think it's just nice to know that there are parts that are available in the case something breaks. All right then, we're gonna start off with a quick unboxing to see what's all included. Some instructions. A transmitter propellers, the FPV system, phone holder, it screws onto your radio, we got a screwdriver, micro USB cable, and a tool used to help tighten the propellers, and of course, the X3. The specs on this drone make it a great option for those who want to get into the multi-copter hobby. The X3 includes everything you'll need to get started minus 4 AA batteries. Well, of course you'll also need a smartphone or tablet if you want to make use of the FPV function. Let's now take a closer look at the X3. The exterior of this quad has a smooth glossy feel to it. I think this is the kind of surface you would expect out of a higher end quadcopter. It actually feels very nice and definitely higher quality than I expected. Supplying the thrust to this quad are some 1806 brushless motors. They are rated at 2300 kV and they're mostly enclosed inside the arms which I think not only protects it from getting damaged but it's also a good way to keep dirt or mud from getting inside. Next up we have some 12 amp ESCs which in my opinion is a bit low for a quad of this size but hey it seems to fly okay and plus it is for a beginner model after all. The circular shape of this board allows for fitment right under the motors and this keeps it nice and safe and very protected. Here is a picture of the flight controller. The product page calls this the receiver board so I'm guessing the receiver is built right in and I believe the board is called the QX250 F1. And lastly, here is a picture of the GPS. And before I go any further, here is the weight of the quad and also the weight of the transmitter. Supplying power to the X3 is a 7.4 volts or two cell, 2000 milliamp hour battery. You can expect flight times of around 15 to 18 minutes on a full charge and that can take up to two hours to charge. The good thing is you don't need any extra battery chargers while the bad thing is it charges through a micro USB port and you know that just takes a long time to charge. We got a button on top to power on the X3 and in doing so we are greeted with a couple beeps as well as flashing lights. On the front of the quad are blue and on the back are green. The lights help with orientation and they look pretty cool especially during nighttime flying which is actually pretty helpful. 
For FPV flying or first person view flying, JJRC has included an all-in-one FPV setup which includes a 1080p camera along with a Wi-Fi FPV allowing you to use your smartphone or tablet as the FPV screen. Here is the camera that is included. On the side here we have a micro SD card slot that supports up to 16 gigabyte cards which should be plenty of space for recording videos and pictures as the expected file sizes for around a 16 minute flight is 380 megabytes and with 16,384 megabytes in 16 gigabytes well you do the math. And here is a quick shot of the application used to connect to the FPV kit. I'll show more details on this later on in my flight footage. But as you can see, it's strangely similar to the toy grade Wi-Fi FPV apps. Let's just hope that the performance is, well, much better. It doesn't work here, but I think this button is if you want to use goggles. It basically just splits the screen into two halves. And a couple other things I wanted to mention before I move on. First, on the bottom of the motors, they have attached, uh, I don't know what to call them. I guess they're just see-through cone-shaped pieces of plastic with a rubber tip. This is the landing feet, and it provides just enough clearance so that the camera doesn't hit the ground. The plastic part is see-through and allows the LEDs to shine through. And I guess the rubber part is just for added grip. And lastly, the props, which I should have mentioned earlier, measures 5.9 inches, that's 150 millimeters. They come in clockwise and counterclockwise directions, and they are self-locking. Because the motors are snugly tucked inside the frame, it is a little difficult to tighten. Thankfully, JJRC includes a little prop wrench to assist in tightening of the props. Included in the kit are six propellers, kind of a weird number, you get one extra for each direction, which is fine. You can always purchase more. But to be honest, unless you're actively trying to crash, it's really unlikely that you will. There are components inside the quad like the GPS, barometer, or even accelerometer that makes flying the X3 a breeze. And next up is the transmitter. It's a 2.4 GHz radio that includes 6 channels using PPM protocol. It looks and feels like a toy grade transmitter, but it's kind of expected for a lower end model. The features of the transmitter are actually quite impressive. One thing I would suggest is before you go out for your first flight, learn the manual and learn what all the buttons do. Don't be like me and have to flip through the manual looking for the return to home button while the quad is in the air just drifting away. Luckily nothing happened because I was actually high enough in the air but if I was any lower it probably would have crashed into some of the nearby trees. Alright so this little screen you see here has a lot of different readouts. It can tell you the speed at which the X3 is traveling at, the distance, the height. It shows how many satellites are currently connected, flight mode, speed mode, as well as a couple more. Check the manual for more details on that. And lastly, the phone holster was a little tricky to get into position, but here is a quick tip. Just insert the holster onto the antenna first, and then you should be able to push it into place. Also, on mine, the plastic washer to give the screw something to hold on to was stuck to the holster itself, so it is there. I initially thought mine was missing. And last, last, last of all, the part that holds on to the phone was pretty loose. So no quick movements, otherwise your phone is going to fall out. Alright, this is the flight test portion of the JJ Pro X3. Powered on, all you do is press the button. You hear that sound so that you know it's on. Just turn the radio on. To access the app, first you need to go into settings. Make sure the Wi Fi hotspot is on. Alright, there it is UAV 2CB8AB. 
Once that's connected, you can go ahead and go into the JJ Pro app, JJRC. Hit connect and you should be seeing what the drone sees. Put it into the loose holster. Make sure not to do any sudden movements, otherwise your phone might drop out. Alright, so I think everything looks good. We are ready to go. So this is up. Let's calibrate the GPS so that we get all the satellites. To initiate the calibration, um, do this to both thumbsticks. When you do this, the green light should turn off and the blue lights will start flashing. Now with the drone flat, rotate until the blue light turns off and the green light remains on. Now do it a few more times this way and now you should have both lights turned on. Alright, let's put this case here so we know the start position. So we can see where we lift off and where we land. Let's put it on top of it. Alright, here we go. Start recording. You can use the buttons on, the, on your phone or on your transmitter to record videos and pictures. All media is recorded onto your micro SD card. Oh, it's drifting. I'm currently in what they call indoor altitude hold mode, which is the first position on the three position switch. And plus it's a bit windy, so I think that's probably the reason why it's drifting a little bit. But if you want it to stay in place, you're going to want to use GPS mode, which is position two on the switch. This will allow the quadcopter to basically hover in place. All right, let's see punch out speed. Not very fast, <laughs> but it is a 2S, so I can't really complain. This is forward, full pitch forward. Wow, that's not too bad. It's actually got a good amount of forward speed, and you can see that it's kind of tilted forward a bit too, which is a big reason why it's not flying bad, as actually. fast as it is. Because the X3 doesn't have any type of video stabilization and it doesn't use a gimbal, the video is bound to be very shaky. Unless you are at a hover or flying perfectly straight, the video footage is going to be quite jumpy. The FPV picture quality is actually pretty good. On the other hand, there is a very noticeable delay. You want to only fly this in open areas, places where you have enough time to react taking into consideration for the delay. These trees right next to me probably messed with the signal. I wasn't so much worried about the X3 drifting away as there are safeguards in place just for this reason. Once the quad reaches the electronic fences boundary, return to home is automatically triggered. I was actually more worried about the X3 flying into the trees. Some of the things that would cause the X3 to return home are when there is a loss of signal, if you reach the electronic fence at 300 meters, or if your drone's battery goes below 20%. If the drone is at an altitude of 30 meters and lower, it will elevate upwards 30 meters and then it flies back home. Otherwise, it will just fly straight back home. With one hand frantically flipping through the manual and the other aimlessly flying the drone, I was somehow able to get the drone back into view. Alright, let's see what happens when I turn off the transmitter. So basically it flies up 30 meters and then it flies back towards the launch site. Alright, just turn it off and it looks like it's coming back home. The same thing would happen if you hit the re return to home switch or if you hit the electronic fence limit. 
On average, I found that the X3 will land 4 to 5 feet away from where it launches, so not too bad. Just a quick heads up here, if for some reason you think the X3 is going to collide with something, it is possible to cancel the return home action. All you do is flip the flight mode switch to either of the other two flight modes. Alright viewers, I'm going to have to cut this one short and end this video here. I had some issues with my memory card and uh, some of the footage was corrupted. So I'll be making another video showing some better flight footage I hope. So as always, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see y'all in the next one.